Abraham Maslow is well known for putting forward six levels of human needs and potential. Firstly, physiological needs. Two, safety needs. Three, social needs. Four, ego needs for autonomy, independence, self-esteem, self-worth. Five, self-actualization needs. The desire to become more and more of what one is and what one's capable of becoming. And then six, transcendence, where the individual goes beyond selfish needs altogether. Maslow pointed out a steady trend towards higher needs and potential. Once a healthy individual has uh, fulfilled lower needs and potential, then they automatically tend to move on to higher needs and potential. Later research showed that managers or leaders higher up in companies are more concerned with higher needs, more concerned with self-esteem and self-actualization than people in lower, uh, lower levels in the, in the company. Other research shows that the proportion of people in UK who are concerned with higher needs and potential has doubled in the last 50 years. And the proportion of people who are concerned with lower needs and potential has halved in the last 50 years. So all of this shows that the self is a real entity which tends, naturally tends, to rise above the needs simply for survival or just for being part of a society to where the self itself manifests its own self qualities. To do this, the conscious self requires a supportive atmosphere that helps, that reinforces this tendency towards higher consciousness, higher needs and higher potential. But modern society denies the existence of the conscious self and it suppresses our natural conscious qualities. Nobel physicist Erwin Schrödinger wrote, so in brief, we do not belong to this material world that science constructs for us. We are not in it, we are outside, we are only spectators. The reason why we believe that we're in it, that we belong to the picture, is that our bodies are in the picture, our bodies belong to it. Schrodinger clearly distinguished between the physical body and the conscious self. Modern material scientists have become confused. More and more, they identify the self with the body, with matter, and they mislead other people and society as a whole along the same wrong direction. René Descartes thought that the soul was a non-material entity that acted on the body through the brain. And modern neurophysiologists and brain surgeons, they've proved for decades that, decades that his idea is right. The Nobel physiologist Sir Charles Sherrington revived this idea in the 1930s. Do we not each think of our I as a cause within the body? Within, in as much as it is at the core of the spatial world, which our perception seems to look at from our body. The body seems a zone immediately about that central core. This I belongs more immediately to our awareness than does even the spatial world about us, for it is directly experienced. It is the self. Wilder Penfield, one of his most brilliant students, wrote that it will always be impossible to explain the mind on the basis of neuronal action within the brain, and that he was forced to accept that our being consists of two fundamental elements, namely brain and mind, or body and soul. Sherrington's even more distinguished student, Nobel, Nobel laureate Sir John Eccles, took this even further, and he showed how consciousness liaises with the body through the dominant hemisphere of the brain. An article entitled Scientists in Search of the Soul in Science Digest stated, Eccles strongly defends the ancient religious belief that human beings consist of a mysterious compound of physical and tangible spirit. Our non-material self controls its liaison brain the way a driver steers a car or a programmer directs a computer. In a chapter entitled Collapse of Modern Atheism, Norman Geisler wrote about Eccles. His work on the brain demonstrated that the mind or intention is more than physical. So in effect, the mind is to the brain what an archivist, archivist is to a library. The former is not reducible to the latter. Sir John Eccles and his lifelong friend, the 
eminent philosopher Sir Karl Popper wrote a classic book together entitled The Self and Its Brain. And Eccles himself stated, we are a combination of two things or entities, our brains on the one hand and our conscious selves on the other. Nobel physicist Sir Roger Penrose wrote, in short, what makes human beings human is not a material quality, it is a spiritual one. And it is clear that its source is an entity apart from matter.